Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Oh my god, StarCraft! So yes, I got a StarCraft 2 beta invite. And yes, I've been playing the living hell out of it. And yes, it is awesome. I'm having a really hard time containing just how excited I am for this game. In fact, I am so excited about it that I'm actually starting a new video series just for StarCraft 2. The plan is to have it every couple of weeks, uh, and I'll just basically be talking about my experiences in the beta and, you know, whatever else happens to come to mind uh, related to StarCraft 2. The reason for all this is, as much as I'm loving the game and I want to talk about it all the time, uh, I'm sure there's probably some of you who would be a little upset if I never talked about Warcraft ever again and instead spent every Weekly Marmot on StarCraft 2. For you guys, don't worry, uh, Weekly Marmot is staying here and it's still going to be about Warcraft primarily, uh, just not this week. So Lore, I hear you say, what's got you so excited about StarCraft 2? Well for one, uh, this can happen! I mean, come on! That's awesome! Now, before I continue, let me just throw a few things out there just so we're both on the same page here. First off, so far in the beta, I have primarily been playing Protoss. That's mostly just because I like to kind of, you know, get a feel for one race before I move on to learning the other races. Plus, uh, once I move on to another race, I know what they use to beat me, so that gives me kind of an advantage uh, when, I say, I move on to learning Terran, uh, and then I come up against a Protoss player. Number two. I am not an amazing player. I am learning, and I think I'm getting better, uh, but I am certainly no David Kim. In fact, I'm not even a David Copperfield. Now that being said, it's really interesting to see just how much of what they're doing in StarCraft II is aimed towards people like me who, you know, maybe we're not terrible, but we're not particularly awesome either. First of all, right when you start playing, uh, it puts you through a few qualifier matches. Uh, just to kind of get a feel for where you're at skill-wise uh, in order to place you into one of a handful of leagues. Now, there's the Bronze, uh, Silver, Gold, and Platinum League, and each of those leagues is split up into divisions of 100 people each. Uh, as you can see here, I am ranked 38th in the 1v1 Bronze Division 4. Uh, let's, not, let's not look at that. Let's, let's come up here a bit. Uh, but basically, uh, what this does is it helps split things up so that you're always playing with people of about an equal skill level to yourself. Winning matches earns you points, which move you up the ranks, and then losing matches, well, you lose points, then you go down the ranks. Uh, if you beat an opponent who's ranked higher than you, or a favored opponent, uh, you get more points for that, and then obviously the reverse is true. If a lower ranked opponent beats you, then you lose a lot more points. Now, you can still play unranked games if you really want to. Uh, there's a custom game option still. If you go in there, those games are not ranked. That being said, the ladder system is really, really well done, and it's been doing a great job so far of matching me up with people who at least I can get a decent game out of. I mean, I lose sometimes, I win sometimes. It's not just, you know, getting completely pounded. Another thing they've done is they've brought replays a lot more to the forefront for people who might not know that they should be watching them. Uh, every replay is automatically saved, and you can go back and look through them later, and you know, it, it just kind of brings a lot more of that incentive to go back and look and see okay what did I do, how did I lose, and what did they do to beat me. A lot of new players to the first StarCraft just never realized just how helpful it is to go and spend five minutes watching a replay and seeing what happened when someone beat you. I mean it doesn't exactly come out and scream hey go watch your replays but you know it's a nice little nudge in that direction at least. Now there's one other feature they've added that seems kind of aimed towards new players that I'm not completely crazy about. A lot of the maps have an option to play in what's called novice mode. Now basically what that does is it takes the original map and then just sort of 
uh, walls off your base with some destructible rocks at the choke points. In some cases, it removes secondary entrances from your base entirely. Uh, in some other cases, it opens up earlier access to some expansions also. Now the idea here, obviously, is to help keep uh, new players from getting completely annihilated by an early rush and thus never getting to move on uh, and learn more about how the later end of the game works. That's not necessarily a good thing, though. First of all, if you never get hit by an early rush, you never learn how to counter an early rush, which means that as soon as you go to move on into the league play, which does not use novice mode, you're just going to get completely smoked by it anyway. It also does some really weird stuff as far as game balance goes. Uh, air units obviously become a lot more powerful because you don't have to open up your base to ground attacks to be able to use them. It also means that since you don't have to worry about early defenses at all, that you can tech much faster. So you end up becoming more reliant on later units than the early bread and butter units like zealots or marines. In short, it has kind of the same effect that easy mode does in Dota where it doesn't necessarily actually make it any easier for you, and all it really does is make you totally suck at playing the actual game. Fortunately though, none of the league play uses the novice mode whatsoever, not even for the qualifying rounds. The only time you run into it is very, very briefly if you decide to play through what basically just says, do you want to play a few rounds of novice mode, uh, or if you're playing the unranked custom games. Now as far as the gameplay itself goes, even with just three days into beta, it feels really, really solid. Obviously there's going to be some balance issues. It's a beta, that's kind of the point of having one, is to work out all these balance issues with a much larger sample size of players uh, to be able to find all the little quirks or whatever and just actually see what's overpowered. Now that being said, it's been really, really interesting to see just how much kind of the general opinion of what's overpowered and what's underpowered has shifted so much even in just the three days it's been up. Pretty much everybody is just kind of learning the units as they go and then learning the counters to those units and then which strategies beat which strategies and how do I fight this and so on and so forth to the point that what seems like it's really really overpowered might actually just have a counter that you haven't thought of yet. I mean, just a, a quick look over the beta forums will show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you can go in there and see, like, maybe there'll be a thread by someone saying, oh, I'm playing Protoss and I just cannot ever beat Zerg. There's no way to beat Zerg as Protoss. They just come in with roaches and kill everything. And then someone else will come in and say, well, you know, if you tech up to Immortals really quick, the Immortals just completely annihilate the roaches. Or maybe you'll have someone come in and say something like, well, Zerg just don't have any good anti-air. And then someone else will come in and say, well, what about Corruptors? They're great anti-air. Uh, or maybe you'll see, like, Thor is just too powerful. There's no way to beat the Thor. How do I fight this thing? And then someone else will come in and say, well, they're big, but they're squishy. Just hit them with whatever you've got, and they'll usually fall right over. Basically, it's just been a really, really exciting couple of days for me. I am absolutely loving this game, uh, and I cannot wait to see just what they continue to do with it as it moves through the beta. Anyway, that's it for me for this week. Uh, thanks so much for watching again. Next week, I'll be back to World of Warcraft, talking about that again on the Weekly Marmot, but keep an eye out for my StarCraft series as well. That's going to be a whole lot of fun. See you next week. Here's more StarCraft.